Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy, the show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors, and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a mobile phone composite in Luminar Neo. What we're going to be creating is a frame in frame composition where basically we're going to have the scene and the same scene will be again in a smaller version on the mobile phone. It's going to be lots of fun. So let's jump straight into Luminar Neo and start. As you can see, I'm in a catalog module and we are starting by looking at the sample files. As always, if you want to follow me along, there is nothing easier than jumping into the description of the video, clicking on the link there, and that will bring you into our Dropbox account. From there, you can download the files and do the edit on your own computer. To start with, let's select the main image and click on the edit on the top of our screen to bring it into edit module. Once we in the edit module, the first thing we're going to do is to import our assets. For this, we need to navigate towards our layers panel and click on the plus sign there. After that, click on load image and in the new window, navigate towards the location where are your sample files. What you want to import is the image with the phone. So let's just select it and click on open. And then once again, click on load image and make sure that you also import the 50% gray layer. Click on it to open it. And now we are ready to start the edit. So the first thing we're going to add is the image with the mobile phone. So let's just click on it and it will bring it onto our image and into our layers panel. Looking at the layers panel, you can see that the image is on the top of our original image and it's currently selected. You can say that it's selected because it has the blue frame on our layers panel as well as on the main image. Now looking at the image and talking about transformation, when it's selected, we can just use the corner of the image to adjust its size. And when we hover over the image or over the asset, the mouse changes into the hand and we can then navigate it around the image and adjust its location. So let's just adjust the ratio and place it nicely at the bottom of the screen. I would like it in a center. So let's say maybe even a little bigger, something like this is looking quite good. Once we're happy, we can move towards our layer properties. We still need to make sure that our layer is selected and we can say that by the blue frame. And if it's selected, we want to go ahead and increase the opacity to 100. So this way we now have the hand with the mobile phone ready. So the next thing we want to do, we want to take a little miniature of our original image and place it on the screen of our mobile phone. To do that, let's go back to our layers panel and just right click on the original image. After that, click on duplicate layer. And in the moment, we're going to get another copy of our original layer. Once it's here, we can adjust its size and move it around the screen to see what we like. First thing we want to do, we want to take it and drag and drop it above our mobile phone. But now, as you can see, the hand and the mobile phone disappear. So to be able to adjust it, let's go back to our layer properties while we still have our new layer selected. And let's just bring the opacity down so we can see a little bit of the mobile phone. Now we can adjust the size. So let's adjust it nicely. So we have a little miniature of the path and of the forest matching nicely with our screen. What you're really looking for is to make sure that you have enough of the image above and under the mobile phone. The rest doesn't really matter, but let's just make it even a little smaller. And once we're happy with it, we can just leave it. Now we can come back into our layer properties and increase the opacity. After that, select the blend mode by clicking on the drop down box and change it from normal into the lighten. By changing the blend mode, we already removed some parts of the image outside of the mobile phone. 
we also have the hand nicely adjusted, so now we just need to do minimal masking. So for this, while we still have the layer selected, let's go into the masking. But before we're going to do that, to make it a little easier, let's once again bring the opacity a little lower so we can see the mobile phone under. I think somewhere around 40 is a good value. So after this, we can jump into the masking and we're going to be using the brush. In the brush, we're going to switch to the erase as we're going to be erasing parts of this layer. Now adjust the size of your brush, bring the softness down. You want to go somewhere between 5 and 10 and leave the strength on 100. Now zoom in, you can do that by using Command or Control Plus, and then navigate around by holding a spacebar. Look at the screen and simply paint away the parts that you wanna remove. When you wanna make a straight line, what you wanna do is to click once on the top, and then hold Shift key and click once on the bottom. And then what it does, it basically connects the two clicks with a straight line, again down here. One at the beginning, holding a shift key, one at the end, and it's making a straight line. Now we're going to take care of the corners in a moment. So one more time here, one click, and one on the top. That's about it. Now let's adjust the corners. And we can make it even nicer in a moment. So let's just make sure that we're all good here. So something like this is looking good. Again, similarly here, and let's have a look. Maybe we need to adjust this corner here as well. And I think that is looking good. Sometimes it's good to zoom out a little bit, so we can do that by using Command minus. And so far, I think we're doing very good. So I like what we've done with the screen, but looking at this edge, maybe we still need to remove a little bit of the image there. So let's just zoom in again. And let's just click one on the bottom again. And again here and one at the bottom here. So I think that is all good. Now looking at the top, maybe we took too much here. So we're going to click on the paint, make the brush a little smaller and we can just paint some part of it back. And again, holding a shift, one straight line. So something like this is looking great. Zoom out and we almost good. Now, let's just go back with our brush. So we can go back to our layer properties, masking, click on brush. Then in the mask action, at the bottom of your tool, make sure that you click on show. This way we can now see the mask and we can come back to our brush. In a brush, we still want to erase some of the other parts of the image outside of the hand. Even though it's not visible, we just want to make sure that it's removed. So let's go back to our erase. We can now increase the size and just brush away these parts very quickly just to make sure that it's nice and clean. Again, on the other side, very similarly, let's just brush these parts away. Perfect. Now we can zoom in again just to take care of the smaller parts like the finger here. Something like this. And similarly here, something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. However, I really like to make sure that I remove the rest of the image so we have it only on the screen. Now let's zoom back and go back into our layer properties where we can now jump out of our masking. So we click on the properties and in the properties, we can now increase the opacity to 100. And so far we're doing quite good. I think the result is really, really nice. And of course you could leave it here, export it and use it. However, if you want to push yourself and bring the image into the next level, what we need to do is to color match the hand with the rest of the image. Because when you look at the image, it's nice and warm and a little darker. And when we look at the hand, it's kind of bright and it kind of has a different colors. So to do that, we're going to use the gray layer. So let's go back into our layers panel and again, click on the plus sign. After that, select the gray layer and bring it into our layers. Again, it takes a moment and after that it appears in our layers panel. Simply drag it over the hand and then you can also adjust its size to make sure that it kind of covers the entire image. After that, navigate into your layer properties and increase the opacity to 100. Once you're happy with it, you can still adjust the position and then move into your blend modes. Click on a gray drop-down box and switch it from normal to color. 
what it does, it actually turns the image into black and white. And this is where we're going to be adjusting the luminance or the exposure of the hand with the background. So for this, let's just make sure that we select the mobile phone layer and then navigate into your main toolbar and open the develop tool. In the develop tool, we can use the curves or we can just use the exposure slider. So as you can see, the hand is much brighter than its background. So we need to bring the exposure slider down. Let's have a look. Looking at it, I think something like this, or maybe even darker, maybe somewhere around here is looking right. We can bring it up somewhere around minus 1.4. And I think it's looking good. Once you finish, you can close the tool and then come back into your layers panel. What you want to do now, you want to right click on your gray layer and just click on hide layer. And looking at it, it's already looking so much better. Have a look at it. Have a look how the hand is already much more matching with its background. We can have a look at the before and after. We can go into our edits. And then in the edits, we can click on the develop tool and click on the little eye. So let's have a look. Before, how bright was that? And after, and now the exposure and the luminance of the hand is matching so much better with the rest of the image. But we are not finished yet. We're going to go back to our main toolbar and we're going to go back to our layers panel. On the layers panel, right click on the gray layer and click on show layer. Now select the gray layer and navigate back to layer properties. In the layer properties, we're going to one more time change the blend mode and this time from color to luminosity. What we're going to do now, we're going to actually adjust the hue and the colors of the hand and the rest of the image. So for this, we're going to one more time go back into our layers panel, select the layer with the mobile phone, and then come back into your main toolbar and open the develop tool. Now inside of the develop tool, you can now close the light section and we're going to navigate towards our curves. In the curves, we're going to be using the red, green and blue curves. If you never used the curves before, I'm going to make this super easy. However, we have a full tutorial on how to use curves in Luminar Neo and I will add the link to this video in the top right corner of your screen. But what are we doing now? Well, it's super easy. You can see how the hand has a little bit of red and a little bit of blue compared to the rest of the image where there is more orange and green. So to adjust that, we're going to start with the red curve. To make this really simple, I just want you to make two points. So one on the top, which represents our highlights, the brighter parts, and one on the bottom, which represents our shadows, the darker parts. All we're going to do, we're going to drag the points up and down, depending on how it's going to match the hand with the rest of the image. So starting with the point on the top, when we go up, it makes it a little bit more orange and it's a little bit closer towards the rest of the image. When we go down, it makes it more kind of green and cyan. So I'm not crazy about that. So I think a little bit up actually is what we want to do. We're going to do exactly the same with our shadows. So the point at the bottom. So we're going to go up and see if we like it or down. I don't really like down. So again, up, I think is a little bit closer. After that, we can click on our green curve and we're going to do exactly the same here. One point, second point and exactly the same. Let's take the point on the top and we're going to go up and see if it's getting any closer. I think a little bit of green is actually what we're looking for. Looking at the rest of the image, there is lots of green there. So touch of green is good. And with our shadows, the second point down, make it more red. We definitely don't want more red. So let's go up and maybe just a touch of green will do. So somewhere around here. Now, after this, we're going to go to our blue curve. And on the blue curve, we're going to do exactly the same. One point, second point, and then go up and see if we like it or down. I think down, maybe a little bit down. And then with the point on the top, up makes it more blue, down makes it a little more similar with our original image. Once we finish, we can close the tool, apply it and move back into our layers panel. On the layers panel, right click on a gray layer and click on hide layer. And there you have it. What the difference? I mean, let's go back again to our edits tab. And here on the top, click on the little eye next to the develop tool we use to adjust the hue. Let's have a look before and after. 
and you can see how much more is it all matching. So now we match our exposure, we match our hue, and the image is pretty much ready. What I would do now is to export it and then bring it back into Luminar Neo and apply some global adjustments to it. I would maybe add some nice vignette, also maybe use the mood tool with some of the LUTs and definitely play around with some additional tools like matte, mystical or glow. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name was Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.